Dear Mr. Riviere, language by its very nature is for communicating. <coughs> Putting the cart before the horse, I have always felt sure that no matter how dominant women become, the terrible scars of the past may never be healed. Neither side comes out smelling of roses. It's hard to argue that Ireland's record on human rights merited the dressing down we got from the UN Rights Committee. What is the use talking to people who think they know better? After the weekend that wasn't, a deep pain and fear is embedded in the mental and physical makeup of many. I wanted the Filipinos and the Chinese and the Spaniards to know what has happened in this country with Garth Brooks is a totally different matter. <laughs> it saddens me. We will do anything if you pay us enough. You must be joking. Down the years, there will be a role for men, because women and girls are afraid of spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Europeans should, therefore, display a bit more introspection. Yours faithfully, Christodoulos Macris. P.S. The Halapanabar case notwithstanding. Dear Mr. <laughs> Macris, thank you for being a mensch. I was saddened to read this, saddened but not surprised. I have also had to literally run for my life past the ironically named Central Station, and I have still received no feedback. Mr. <laughs> Ford has recently used the media to plead poverty. Will he profit from his crime by writing a book? This belies a more sinister undertow. Reach for the sick bag, we won this hands down, and I still found myself in the unfortunate position of dialing 999. People like you and I might not make it. I remember one who wore a silk scarf and sold newspapers on the corner of the library. There are no meters for us in the new installations, and the government is being very economical with the truth. A freewheeling parliament, including members who have openly convorted with the country's enemies. There is nothing worse than to see a lie and tell a lie. Does anyone see a similarity here? Respectfully yours, Saint Rivier. To the yeah, editors, professor, a, re a redaction. Like, would, Mr. Macris's letter of a week previous barely merits my repost. <laughs> Suffice to say, it's lucky for me that ignoring women is the only thing that turns me on. I'm going to be non-committal on this one, meaning I'm not sharing my sources or secrets, except I've got nothing and also I hate editing. <laughs> Anything worth stealing is too heavy to carry, IMHO, and there's no one attentive enough here to tell me what that is, steam in a sauna or something. Isn't it all a bit easy, like five stars from your best friend, to show the page such blinding disdain? I'm being serious. Anyway, if Mr. Macris were familiar with the conventions of the letters pages, he would have addressed his remarks to you, Ms. Dams, not the author who aroused his sentimental outrage, the identity of whom in any case seems disputable. <laughs> I'm writing from an orange room where nothing rhymes, Mr. Macris. <laughs> but now I've lost my concentration. Mm. Couldn't we be a little less unmysterious? I feel as if our voices are missing a conversation, but then suddenly I feel optimistic. Don't even consider switching allegiance. Put the record on the gramophone if you have one, and things shouldn't look so gruesome. With kind regards, yours, SR, address withheld. <laughs> Madam, I insist on reversals of convention and the mudding of waters as a matter of principle, and will attend to the gentleman's concerns anon. <laughs> it pains me to see the wanton spilling of fine ink on what I call splinful stream of consciousness, <laughs> sly and concentrated shows of passive aggression. The barb about gramophones in particular is literally below the belt. Or should that be metafictionally? <laughs> I don't really know, and I care not one jot about pendants. In some deep, loving way, I can hardly blame the gentleman, in fact, <laughs> spending energy and time sifting through the rubbish that we as a country leave behind in our haste to join, what, an enlightened state, the first world, immortality, but I digress. Mr. Riviere clearly believes that because of his fast connectivity and extensive experience in the nitty-gritty of internet slang, he is qualified <laughs> to offer a review of the efforts and ideologies of others. That may be so, but how could one ignore his, dealings, his dealings with peer Ms. Redacted? <laughs> what about all the other anonymous trendsetters? No, though refusing to divulge my methods puts me in concert with Mr. Riviere and his cohorts, I have no doubt that we are playing from very different song sheets. Or is it praying and hymn sheets? Damn it, I don't care. Read on and weep. Yours, CM. 
to whom it may Dear concern, Professor, if the following does not pertain I would to like you. to recount a little story. Fifty years ago, the last train pulled out of Donegal, seeking to spark the multi-cylinder engine, able to quickly crank from a routine mindset to full throttle. Perhaps, if you get on without paying or find a 50 euro note and slip it into your pocket, an evil deed committed by a person, you could refrain from implantation in the womb or some other arbitrarily defined mindless slaughter. The crux of the issue, Professor, is that these savages originate from many places. UN, stroke USA, stroke Israeli forces, Palestinian citizens, an OAP who is now skinned until Thursday, an international statesman who brought pride to Ireland, Syria and Iraq's brave hooded freedom fighters, Italy's olive groves, my own late father. From a scan of their conception, statements in such callous patchworks of plays result in 68 people being blown to bits. Calling for a 48-hour strike looks like the Hakka war dance. Professor, the greatest mind since Einstein had a lineage, a sideline, the jersey. What a juxtaposition. Tied in with this is the question of when does history start? Mindfully. Christodoros Macris. To whom it may concern, if the following does not pertain to you, please cease reading now. I'm away from my offices for the foreseeable future with little or no internet access. It wasn't even all that real all that much of the time, S. To the man with the pink bougainvillier in his buttonhole on the steps outside, this time yesterday I was yet to collect the conch shell that forms the centrepiece of my outfit from the clear bay bottom, guided by the lissom and abbreviated forms of local divers. As I yanked away my goggles and heaved onto the wooden pier, the director informed me of our impending departure, and a jeep pulled up in a flourish of dust to take us to the island's one-strip airport, where we boarded the next available flight, nine and a half hours of stomachless gliding, during all which I read the last half of Honor de Balzac's Lost Illusions and then took online personality tests until my battery died, when we all stopped what we were doing to watch a storm sparking below us in the tiny windows, its sickness of flashes and smoke like watching a party from a balcony, not this kind of party. Once we touched down, we taxied through the city to the one train service that still runs a fully functioning dining carriage, and I ate a magnificent half lobster than a slice of baked cheesecake while the darkened countryside passed without meaning or consequence. Arriving here at 20 minutes to midnight when I saw you on the steps, it's crazy, on the marble steps outside, shooting you a look, my entourage palming you a cream-coloured business card in the hope you'd find me in the fern room, under a green light, looking at something virtual. You know, the pictures don't do you justice, and despite the venom of our earlier correspondence, all the antipathy melted away at first sight. If this is a poem, like every arrival, it's a story of departure. If it's a letter, it's like something discarded on the floor inside a painting. If it's a request, it's the evidence of its origins, which are plain and heartfelt. If it's a receipt, it's the notice of its hopelessness. If this text rebounds, it will have touched its own failure and be worth something. If it's a misconnection or an out-of-office auto-reply in disguise, I'll only know when you say hello. If you take a while, that's fine. Mm -hmm.